Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Glory to God. I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank everyone for your prayers. Um, the Lord has answered our prayers. Uh, Sonia and I will be moving into our new place uh, tomorrow in the coming days, and so um, in the process of moving, uh, you know, we'll probably have to step away from ministering for a few days, uh, but I trust that I will share something with you today that will uh, carry you for a bit, carry you for a little while. So we're thankful to the Lord that He is speaking to us, that He's giving us insight and understanding of His Word. And uh, so we're going to be looking at something today that I think you will find very intriguing, as I have found. Many times I have overlooked this, and it wasn't until recent that the Holy Spirit brought this to my attention. So we're going to be looking at a verse of Scripture in Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. And verse 31. Exodus chapter 9, verse 31. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. B O L L E D. The flax was bold. Folks, I'm not sure if you know what that means. What the significance of the flax being mentioned along with the barley. The barley, we have learned that this is a type, the barley harvest is a type of the church as a whole. And we have learned that the first fruits comes out of the barley harvest. But we have not discussed or learned about the flax. The significance of the flax. More importantly, the flax seed. Flax begins as a seed. But if you have looked at the uh, community section of YouTube, you'll see that we have posted some videos there having to do with the process that flaxseed goes through in producing fine linen. Now, for you that are in the know, for you out there that are uh, living close to the Lord and you understand spiritual things. When I mention fine linen, that should cause your ears to perk up. In fact, it should cause your heart to leap. If you understand what the fine linen has to do with. So, this is the flax that is being processed into fine linen. We're going to be spending some time on this, I will assure you. We're not just going to get it all in today. There's a process that, that the flax goes through to produce fine linen. And we're going to be dealing with that. But first, just today, I wanted to look at the fact that flax is mentioned with the barley. As they were coming out of Egypt, as they were leaving Egypt, the children of Israel, it says the flax and the barley was smitten. Why was the flax and the barley smitten, but the wheat wasn't? Listen, but the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. They were not grown up. The Lord is following the feasts, folks. That's how 
we are to determine where we are spiritually by the feasts. Are you listening? And the barley harvest and the flax harvest, these, this harvest takes place at the beginning of the harvest season. It's what kicks off the harvests and uh, the whole year, the, the complete season, uh, all the seasons. But uh, more importantly, the flax and the barley that both grow up at around the same time. And if you look in the scripture, you'll find that barley many times in the scripture has to do with the overcomer. That's right. The overcomer has to do with revelation. But again, I digress there because I want us to look at flax or the flax seed. The scripture says that the flax was bold. It was bold. When we look up this Hebrew word for bold, it means that it it has to do with a flower, okay? But it also has to do with to cup, to cup. In other words, it's like when cotton is bold, right? A bold of cotton. In other words, it's ready to pluck. It's ready to harvest. The flax was ready to harvest. It still had to go through the process of making it into fine linen, but it was ready to harvest. Oh, God. I don't know if you folks are understanding what I'm saying to you. We've been talking about that we are in barley harvest time. But the flax is bold. It is ready to be plucked. You listening? It is ready to be processed into fine linen. The book of Revelation speaks of the bride it was a it was granted to her to be arrayed in fine linen right which is the righteousness of the saints god is working his righteousness into us but there's a season there's a time are you listening we have to understand the season that we are in spiritually, and the harvest. We have to understand these things to understand where we are, folks. The Word of God should cause you and I to come alive. It should quicken us when we understand where we are. So, it's one thing to think about being in barley harvest time, but when you look at The fact that we are in flax, flax harvest time as well. And when you look at what the scripture says about the fine linen, it really begins to awaken the inner man, doesn't it? It begins to cause us to sit up and to stand up. So let's look at this verse in Revelation, the fine linen. Glory to God. Fine linen. Revelation 19, verse 8. Listen to what it says here. Actually, let's go back to verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, or the righteous acts of the saints. So here we see fine linen, and we understand that fine linen comes from the flax. Hello? 
Do you understand what's happening here? When they were, when they were, the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. It was the beginning of barley harvest and flax season, the harvesting of the flax and the the barley. Okay, and remember, the first fruits comes out of the barley that begins the harvest for this for the whole year. Until the first fruits comes out of the barley and offered up to God by the high priest, the harvest cannot begin. The feasts cannot begin. Nothing can begin until that first fruits is first offered up. And that first fruits is a type of the bride. Now do you see what's going on here, folks? If the bride is the first fruits... And the bride is going to be arrayed in fine linen, which is the righteous acts of the saints. And the scripture says the flax was bold. Do you understand what the scripture is saying here? The flax is ready to be plucked. It's ready to be gathered. Hello? And the barley is ready to be gathered. Remember, Ruth came in, uh, came in to, at, at barley harvest season, the beginning of barley harvest. Ruth is a type of the bride. If you look this up in the book of Ruth, you will see that this is a type of the bride, and Boaz is a type of Jesus. These are types. And Ruth came into Bethlehem, Judah, at the beginning of barley harvest. She was a Gentile, and she became the bride of Boaz. Are you listening, folks? Also, we see the revelation that Gideon received was a barley loaf. Not a wheat loaf, but a barley loaf that rolled in. And revealed that God was bringing them the victory. It wasn't a wheat loaf. It was a barley loaf. And if there was a barley loaf, you know there was also flax that had been harvested. We're looking at the timetable. We're looking at the timing here, folks. Don't say there's three and four months under the harvest. Lift up your Eyes. The fields are white. The fields are ready. Hallelujah. Are you making yourself ready? She made herself ready. How did she make herself ready? She was clothed in fine linen. To be clothed in fine linen, folks, the fine linen had to be weaved, had to be made into that which she was arrayed in. Do you realize that the bride is actually preparing her own wedding garment with righteous acts? Obedience to Christ. This is how you prepare your wedding garment. Your wedding gown. Are you listening, folks? Now, if you look at the process that the flex goes through, it has to go through a very vigorous process. Now, if you look at the videos we provided for you in the community section, you will see the process that it goes through. You'll see it. And it's amazing to watch how they spin how they spin that flax are you listening how they spin the flax into fine linen to be made into garments There's a process that it's going through. It's a long process. It's a vigorous process. But it's needed. 
And maybe you've been wondering, Lord, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? Just look at the process, folks, that flax goes through to produce fine linen, and you'll understand what he's doing. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to be found naked. He wants you to be clothed with fine linen. And that happens through our obedience. That happens through righteous acts. As we obey the word, we are applying it to our own lives. That's how you weave. That's how you prepare. That's how you make yourself ready, saints. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Let us be glad. Rejoice. Give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. She's clothed in her wedding gown. She's clothed with righteousness. But not just clothed with righteousness. She has received imputed righteousness, an imparted righteousness. In other words, she is taking on his own divine nature. We're talking about needlework here. We are talking about gold of Ophir being sewn into fine linen. Are you listening, people? Here is this queen standing. And I could show you that verse, but I want you to look it up. I want you to do a word search. Look up gold of Ophir. Study the word, people. Get into the word for yourselves. Here's the queen standing in gold of Ophir. How that gold has been, has been interwoven into this beautiful wedding garment of fine linen. Hallelujah. Needlework. It's, it's intense. Intensive. It is vigorous. You understand what I'm saying to you? It's needlepoint. It's, it's done in a needle. It's not something that God does just across the whole swath. You understand what I'm saying to you people? It's not something where you just throw it over. No. This is something that is being done, that is done at needlepoint. Precision. Precision. The Lord is engrafting. He is engrafting his own divine nature into his bride. You understand what I'm saying? She with meekness is receiving the engrafted word. She's becoming like him. She's taking on his character. She's taking on his nature. Jesus did nothing of himself. He did only those things that please the Father. And so must the bride. Do only those things that please God. Amen. Glory to God. Some of these things you may not be able to receive now. Some of these things may be hard for you to receive. But for you that have ears to hear, for you that are spiritual, you can hear what the Lord is saying to you. This is not something done in a corner. This is not something that's just done abstract. This is not something that's just, uh, uh, you know, how do I say it? Just, it's the same for everyone. No. No. This is something that is done in precision. This is something that is done in detail. Fine detail. You understand what I'm saying? When you look at clothing that has fine detail in it, right? And you see that it has embroidery and it's detailed. And you look at fine linen and you look at these fine things in life that the rich, the super rich have. 
the Lord is going to have a bride that is going to be arrayed in the finest. In the finest. Nothing lacking. Total, complete precision. Total perfection. Without fault. Without any guile. Without any fault. Without any mixture. You understand what I'm saying to you folks? Hallelujah. Are you making yourselves ready? I realize now that the marriage is closer than even I thought. I never saw the flax before the barley. Again, the flax has to do with the fine linen. Flax has to do also with a wick. Has to do with a burning lamp. Amen. That's what they use flax for. A smoking flax he will not quench. Are you getting the message, folks? In Luke chapter 12, let your lights be burning. Flax seed produces flax for a wick. They would take flax and they would wrap it around the end of a stick and it would become a torch. They would dip that flax into oil. Do you understand the spiritual types in this, folks? Oh, praise the Lord. We see the picture of the wise virgins, their lamps burning. We see in Luke chapter 12, where you that are men unto men that, uh, that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. Let your lamps be burning. And now it's talking about fine linen as far as the righteous of the saints. And she's made herself ready. Do you understand what's happening here? God, the Holy Ghost, is giving us revelation to help us to understand where we are, brothers and sisters. It's closer than we think. Oh yes, the marriage is closer than we think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day I was thinking, Lord, it's got to get much worse before the bride can be taken. It was like the Lord said, why? Why have you been looking at it like that? Why do you think it has to get worse for me to take my bride? And it just dawned on me. I say, well, I don't know why I thought that, Jesus, but... No, it's not. It's not that it's got to get worse, people. It's that he's waiting on you and I to get ready. She made herself ready. He's waiting for us to apply His Word to our lives. And He's not going to just, you know, He's not just going to nonchalant or, you know, in a lazy manner, uh, just anything goes. No. It's going to be fine linen. It's going to be needlework. You listening to me, folks? It's going to be detailed. Every single detail is important to the Lord. Every detail of your life is important to the Lord. Are you listening to me? When our, my wife and I prayed for a place to stay, there were three things that we asked the Lord for. Are you listening? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, to some degree, we got all of those that we were praying for in this place we're going to be living in, but not to what I was looking for. The, I wasn't, I'm looking for the exceeding. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm looking for his best. And you know, the Lord gave us a great place to stay, but it still does not meet up to the expectations that I believe God, and I'm not talking about a place that's expensive. I'm talking about, folks, God answering prayer. I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about God working a miracle. Just before this place that we ended up getting, and we couldn't find it anywhere on the internet. We've been looking, you know, vigorously, my wife and I, day and night looking for a place to stay. We've been diligently looking. 
and we had never seen this property that, that we're about to move into. Never saw it. Wasn't out there. And he told us yesterday, he said, this was $200 more a month. We dropped the price. Now, usually when they do updates to a place, they go up on the price, right? He did a bunch of updates to this place, folks, and he went down on the price. Are you listening to me? But it's still not fully what I've been looking for because I like to cook. I like to have a kitchen that where I can cook and have it open. But he, I can see the Lord is working. I can see the Lord saying, keep on coming. Amen. You'll ha- you, you may even have that in this life. You may even have that kitchen where you want to have that open kitchen where you can cook. That means a lot to me, folks, because I not only don't I, do I enjoy cooking, I enjoy cooking for others. You listening to me? And entertaining others. And so I'm believing God to give my wife and I a place where one day we'll be able to entertain, entertain guests. But listen to what I'm saying to you. If we're not getting the answer in detail, precision, to what we're asking God for, either we're not asking God in detail, either we're being neglectful on our part, or God is saying to us, I'm taking you there, but you're not ready yet. But we're going to be thankful along the way for every blessing God brings our way. Are you listening to me? And I will tell you this, the place we're staying in now is better than the place we were staying in previously. And I will tell you this, that it is costing us a little bit more. But do you understand, folks, how the natural side-by-side with the spiritual, as we grow in the Lord? You know, the scripture says... I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper even as your soul prospers. So as your soul prospers, God will prosper you in the natural. But see, the charismatics today, they're prospering in the natural, but they're not prospering spiritually. It's backwards. But the saints of God, God's people, listen, God has laid up the riches of the wicked for the just, but we're not ready for them yet. We're not ready for those riches yet. We're not ready to be the head yet. God is taking us there, brothers and sisters. The day will come, praise God, when the Lord says those that are the synagogue of Satan, they will come and bow down before us. Are you listening to me? But like I said, we're going to thank God along the way. We're going to be thankful for the many blessings along the way. Is it exactly what I was Anticipating Was it exactly what I envisioned? Is it, is it really what I've been... No, I can't tell you that. But I'll tell you this. It's better than the last place. Amen. Better than the last place. You may think Brother Joseph's being greedy or Brother Joseph's being selfish, but maybe you understand what I'm telling you. I'm not looking for the best as far as in this world. But I don't think God looks at us and says, I want you to believe me for the least no I don't think God wants us to do that people I think God wants desires for his people to believe him for the best let me ask you a question is there any reason why God's people cannot have the best even at the best price I don't believe in wasting money I don't believe in being um, you know wasteful I don't believe in that I don't even like to waste food. I believe in being frugal. I believe in being modest um, in everything. But I see what God's doing. As we grow, He grows us, our environment, everything. Are you listening to me? You saw what the riches did to Solomon before he was ready for the riches. Are you listening? Solomon wasn't ready for what God had given him. And it's proven right there in the scripture. 
but may you and I get ready. Amen. And, and not so much for ownership. Jesus didn't own anything in this earth. He didn't own the donkey. He didn't own the grave. He, everything was borrowed. He didn't own a home. But that doesn't mean he didn't enjoy nice things. Amen. I don't think Jesus was clothed in rags. Folks, I'm not a prosperity preacher. But I know Satan, that serpent, that old serpent, the devil, the dragon. I know he has gotten in and he has perverted the truth. And he would like you and I to have nothing, right? While the super rich have it all. Well, let me tell you right now, even as uh, James said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, even as your soul prospers. Amen? It was God's plan for David to have the riches of the world. It was God's plan for Solomon to have the riches And it's God's plan for you and I to prosper. Make no mistake about it, people. Make no mistake about it. Hallelujah. But as thy soul prospers. As your soul prospers. So you look at your wealth in the physical realm. Be honest. Look at the, look at your surroundings. Look where you live. Look at what you drive. Look at all the look at it. And I'm going to tell you, you're prospering as your soul prospers. So where you live, how you live, all these things are without question an outward sign of an inward condition. That's the truth, people. Again, I'm going to tell you those these mega churches today and these TV evangelists they got it backwards they're not prospering spiritually and so riches are deceitful to them they're being deceived they think that gain is godliness supposing gain is godliness well brothers and sisters let's not get the cart before the horse God knows he can trust you with the with the riches of this world if he can trust you with the true riches. Amen? If God can entrust you with the true riches, he can entrust you with the physical riches. And that's where he's taking us. That's where he's taking us. Praise God, people. Glory to God. The Lord is working. And to the degree that we submit to him and let him work, and make us what he would have us to be. Amen. I believe that the Lord would have us to be the head and not the tail. I believe the Lord would have us to be the lenders and not the borrowers. I believe the Lord has laid up the riches of the wicked for the just. I believe this. I have struggled with these things over the years, people saying, because I've seen the charismatics, I've seen these churches that live millionaire lives, celebrity lives, and they have no spiritual growth. They have no maturity. And most, for the most part, they're not even saved, not even born again. And uh, it turns me off. But the Lord's teaching me something. Joseph, I give you the blessing so you share it. I give you abundance so you can share it, not hoard it to yourself, not just for you to enjoy, but give it to you so you can have abundance so that you can share it with others. Share the wealth. We talked about that yesterday or the message previous to this message. How many know the Lord is taking us somewhere, people? Amen? He doesn't want you and I to grow up overnight. It's a process of growth. Little, uh, here a little, there a little, right? Day by day, we're growing, we're maturing. We don't want to grow up overnight and be gone in one night. Amen? We don't want to be a fly by night. We desire to grow as the Lord helps us to grow. Amen? As we depend on Him. And He is growing us. 
He's growing us spiritually and he's growing us in the, in the natural as well so that we can have greater provision to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. You know, they look into some of these ministries, these mega churches, and they find that the money that or the uh, the um, the the percentage of the money going out versus coming in as far as going to charity or going to help churches or help orphans is so ridiculous. The amount that goes out comparing to what goes in, even Joel Osteen, the, the money that is spent on charity is so minuscule it is just so minute compared to the money coming in that's not the way it's supposed to be if the scripture says more blessed is to give than it is to receive if the scripture says give and it shall be given to you then why aren't those big mega churches giving think about it why aren't they giving more than they're receiving see this is the way god has designed this to work people it's to be with no ebb, right? It's to be a flow with no ebb. In other words, it's we're supposed to get into this place where it just flows, where there's no ebb, there's no stop, right? Where the riches flow to us and they flow out. They flow to us, they flow out. They flow to us, they flow out. But they keep flowing in and then out. Flows in and out. That's the way the kingdom is supposed to be in our lives. That's the way the, the living water is supposed to be. It flows in, it flows out. And if it flows in and it never flows out, it becomes stagnant. If you have money flowing in and nothing going out, it becomes stagnant. You become, um, well, you eventually become corrupt. Become like a swamp. Are you listening? Become defiled. Because those riches get a hold of you. You start hoarding those riches. But the way God has designed this, brothers and sisters, is that the riches flow in and the riches flow out. And it's no ebb. And there's no ebb. Glory to God. A flowing, a flowing of God's provision. A flowing. You understand what I'm saying to you, folks? Years and years ago, the Lord said this to me. He said, you will be wealthy. And it was, uh, I don't know, a few hours later. And then he said to me, but it's not going to be for you. It's not going to be for you. It's for my people. It's for my kingdom. He said, the needs are great. And he said, I will use you to meet the needs. As I direct you, I will use you to meet the needs. And right now, folks, there's a joy that is just bubbling on the inside of me. I can't wait to where God is going to begin to use this minister to be a blessing financially even to other ministries. I'm looking for that day when God uses me in that capacity to be that conduit in which God's blessing can flow in and flow out. To some degree, we've experienced some of that, my wife and I. We've experienced that, that but not to the degree that the Scripture speaks of. No ebb. Flowing in, flowing out. Flowing in. There can't be anything in us that stops the blessing from flowing out. Are you listening to me? It's got to be so free that it can flow in and flow out with no ebb, with no stop, with no hindrance. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's got to cycle, folks. It's got to cycle glory to God. It's got to come in and go out, come in and go out, come in and go out. And you'll never exhaust God's kingdom. But if you put a stop and you start hoarding God's love, and you start hoarding the true riches, the grace of God, and the mercy of God, and then you start hoarding even the physical riches, it won't be long before you'll be destroyed. The riches, the fame, every, everything, it all destroy you. But if you let it flow out, 
As it flows in, let it flow out. Enjoy the blessing as it's flowing. Hallelujah. Just like the River Jordan, or just like a, any river that's flowing and overflowing its banks. Amen. You can get down there and maybe get a little swallow of that water as it's flowing by. But if you put a stop and build a dam, what's going to happen to that water? It's going to become stagnant. Remove the dam. Remove the stop. There'll be no ebb. And let that river flow freely through you. Out to the world. Out to others. Do not hold back the blessing of God that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Do not hold back contain or try to control the blessing of God. Allow the blessing of God like water to flow freely. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you.